everybody, welcome to the Wall Doc Way. I'm Jessica, and today's video is going to be a Rainbow Resources back to school haul. I am super excited. I don't have a ton from Rainbow Resources, but the things I have are really, really good. I love using them for homeschool things because sometimes they have really unique resources and nine times out of 10, they have some really great prices on them. In fact, they normally will even beat out Amazon. So I like checking there for things first. So I'm just gonna get started. The thing I was the most excited about are these life skill kind of real world math workbooks. I thought these would make an amazing addition to Kevin and Emily's STEAM lessons, if you will. He has been wanting to do things with her that would be like the more traditional real world math, like bank accounts and checkbooks and credit cards, the things you don't typically find in like your standard math curriculum. These specifically, the ones I bought were a bundle. You could purchase these individually or all together. Um, and on the back, they do say that they're for grades six through 12. So when I show you these, I'm not like planning on us getting through all of them this year. I just kind of wanted to have them on hand to work through and it was more affordable if you bought the bundle. So the first one I have is bargain math. And then we have budget math. Bank account math. Checkbook math. And credit card math. And I am just going to randomly let you see inside one of these. They are pretty much all similar to that. They're black and white. They're very, very plain and simple, but I think it's exactly what I was looking for as far as just having it spelled out for me. Like, for example, this page talks about credit scores. So again, I'm not sure how we're gonna use these, but I know that we will definitely be going through all of those at some point in the next few years. And then kind of in addition to that, I picked up this real world math unexpected events game. It is for um, ages eight and up, two to six players. And it is understanding money and personal finances and learning to balance a checkbook. I just thought it would be, you know, kind of a fun hands-on way to get in some real world math. And then we have Bananagrams Duel. Uh, in our homeschool, Emily and I end up playing a lot of games, just the two of us. And Bananagrams is one of those that's, I mean, you can do it with two people, but it, it's just a little clunky is what I like to say. A lot of games don't play really well as two players. So when I saw this, I was like, oh, this is perfect because it's 10 minutes to play. Um, 10 rounds so it'll be like super duper quick it's basically a head-to-head -head. there's themed cards and cubed letters so you kind of have like these little themed bananas and then your letters are like dice so i'm excited to add a two-player word game i personally love word games and then speaking of two player games, I also picked up this cube duel. It's by smart games. It is a 10 player plus or 10 years plus game and it is two player. It kind of reminds me of Tetris, except it's in the cube form. So it's kind of three dimensional. Um, and Emily, as soon as she saw it was like, Oh, it's kind of like Minecraft. So she's convinced that she's going to be great at it because she's good at Minecraft. We shall see. But there's also, in addition to this being a great two player game, there's also 81 player challenges. So it's one of those games where she can play single player or we can play together. And I love when we can do that with a game. It means it can sit on our shelf. We can easily pull it off and play together really quick head to head, or she can play it by herself to get a little bit better at it or to practice logic. It's a win-win. Let's see. I also grabbed these two cookbooks just because they looked really fun. The Math Chef. It is 60 math activities and recipes for kids. Um, it talks about like the Math Chef's tool of the trade and how many grams is a pound of potatoes and how many quarts is a liter of milk and how long is that giant cookie? Uh, how much soup in a bowl of soup? What does a handful of pasta weigh? How do you cook candy? How do you triple a sandwich recipe? How do you cut an applesauce recipe in half? 
How much lettuce do you need for six salads? What's one third of a waffle? What's the percent of margarine in a muffin? What is the area of a brownie? Uh, what's the diameter of a cupcake? And what's the circumference of a pie? So it has recipes, but all the recipes have some sort of math um, activity or kind of background to it. Here's an example of one. I just thought, again, it would be a great way to have some guided real world math. And then when I was looking at that one, it popped up at the bottom. You might also like the Science Chef. And this is the Science Chef Travels Around the World. It is fun food experiments and recipes for kids. Uh, let's see. We have the Science Chef's Tools of the Trade. Um, and in Canada, we have an experiment, What Keeps Lettuce Crisp? Then we travel to Mexico, and our experiment is How Does Soaking Affect Dried Beans? In Brazil, how does a barometer predict the weather? Italy, why do we dry foods? France, how do plants take in nutrients? Uh, Germany, how can you tell acid from a base? Spain, what happens when you cook custard? Israel, how can you determine the specific gravity of potatoes? India, do vegetables die when you pick them? Anyway, and so it goes on and on like that. But then in each uh, place for example when we get to Thailand it's how do bean sprouts grow but then you also have recipes like Thai salad with bean sprouts and zippy fried rice with chicken and banana nut dessert so there's like a science experiment and then recipes that go with that too so it's like science and geography all in one and then we have looking after your health this is actually an usborne book i was looking for it usborne no longer carries it or at least i couldn't find it on usborne so i grabbed it from rainbow resources um, i was looking for something that had a very generic kind of health overview so that we could talk about some of it and this seemed to hit the mark um, it's like what is health your amazing body let's talk about food diet dieting and diet culture body maintenance exercise, mental health matters, help is out there, the importance of sleep, um, and then help for life. So more about food, exercise, and stress management. And it's really simple. Um, it's like little chapters. And then at the end of each chapter, there is normally some sort of little quick quiz. I mean, I'm not going to quiz her, but I think it makes a great way for us to discuss some of the things that we've read about. And so this is just something I picked up to have, like I said, a baseline. And then also because Emily is getting to that age where this is starting to kind of matter, I got the ultimate uh, girls book guide. And I, what I liked about this is it's from like a question standpoint. So instead of it being a book that just tells her what's happening, it asks a question first. Um, so for example, am I growing or is the ceiling dropping? Uh, how do periods work anyway? Let's see what else we have. Uh, why do I sweat? Nails, makeup, and hair. How much should I care? Social media is fun, but how much is too much? Is there a monster in my computer? When will I become a woman? So it's, like I said, from a question standpoint, and I just feel like that's a little less intimidating to say, like, Oh, this is a question that I also maybe have and read the answer to the question versus just like being told all this information. Maybe I'm wrong, but I think it will be really helpful for Emily to have it in a question standpoint. So I grabbed that for her. And then we are going to be going on a road trip very soon. Um, we are hoping to go to a handful of national parks um, out west. We're hoping to hit the Texas and New Mexico national parks. And so to go along with that, I grabbed the Road Trip America word teasers. Um, it just looked kind of fun. So you have like, for example, the mysterious dome house on this Florida island was built as A, a structure for aliens, B, a floating hotel, or C, a vacation home. Um, and then it obviously was a vacation home, but then it explains more about the dome house on the back of the card with the answer so we can learn while we travel. Also, the scavenger hunt road trip, just to give us something fun to do that's not screen-based while we're in the car together. And then, because we're going to be doing national parks, I got this extreme dot-to-dot -dot national park because I loved that it was something that was actually going to challenge her. I mean, that is seriously amazing. 
And here are some finished examples on the back. And then also the Ultimate Sticker License Plate Game. Now I actually got two of these because in the very center of the book is the US map with the license plate stickers. And I thought Emily and I would come up with a challenge and see which of the two of us, because Kevin will do the majority of the driving, um, which of the two of us, like without pointing them out, could fill our maps the quickest with the license plate that we see. And I haven't figured it out yet, but there's going to be maybe some sort of prize, like something that our whole family would like to do, but some sort of something to look forward to. And then again, because national parks, I grabbed a few new national parks games to add to our library. So this is the national parks gets wild, a frenzy game of wildlife wrangling. It is, let's see a 20 minute gameplay, three to six players and six plus for age. And then the national parks trivia board game, the uh, um, trivial pursuit. This is, let's see if I can find it, eight plus for ages. And I'm so missing it. It does not say, oh, two to six players. There we go. And then the last thing that I grabbed at Emily's request were a 12 pack, or maybe I bought them individually. I don't remember if I bought them individually or in a bundle, but they are just blank books. Um, I'll open one. They're hardback and you can draw on the covers, but it's, you know, a hardback book. And then I want to say that there's just 32 blank pages inside. She's really in this like phase of making her own books right now. She's creating a cat, um, breed guide dictionary thing. It's so adorable. She's using the sprocket and she's sticking uh, cat pictures inside and then writing a tons of fact, like tons and tons of facts about them and making an index and a glossary and table of contents and all the things. Uh, but she loves that the hardback ones feel more like a real book. Um, and that there's like enough pages that you can fill it up, but there's not so many that it feels like you can't fill it up feasibly on one topic. So because of the amount that she is using here recently, I just went ahead and grabbed 12. Like I said, I don't remember if I bought them individually or if it was a bundle. So that is it. That is everything for the Rainbow Resource Back to School Haul. And this video actually brings us to a close for our back to school hauls for the 2023-2024 homeschool year. If you've missed them, I will link them up here. I have already done an Amazon back to school haul and an Usborne back to school haul, and they were both pretty epic. So make sure you check them out if you haven't yet.